Thanks for stopping. Yeah. What changed your mind? I mean, because you were um, just walking by. Uh, honestly, I, I don't, you'll hear about my voice, but I did a tarot card reading a little while ago. Uh huh. And she got this really puzzled look on her face and she's like, Do you do podcasts? I said, No. She's like, You should. Interesting. To talk about <laughs> my beliefs uh, and what I'm passionate about. Oh, uh, interesting. So after you, I passed by, I'm like, I need to do this. Well, I don't want you to feel pressured or any way, either from them or, or <laughs> us or whatever. Okay. Um, that could be... So basically, we, we take a claim like that, like um, um, that there's a correlation between what that person said and you actually c coming over here or some other belief, or we can even talk about something more in ge more general, like what does it mean to have a belief or what does it mean to have good evidence for a belief? Okay. Um, just to give you a little bit of a background. Okay. I, I just literally landed about an hour ago oh, from wow. Texas. Okay. My friend Mark here has a, this is his setup. Okay. So I, I just rolled in and, and but I've, I've been having conversations like this for a long time. Okay. And generally, uh, my goal is to try to take my own beliefs out of it and try to fully understand where you're coming from okay. and be a mirror to your own beliefs. Okay. I want you to hear how you're reasoning about things. Okay. Does that sound? Okay. You want to, you want to do that? Yeah. And if at any point you're uncomfortable or you know you don't want to do this or if you want to ask me questions in return. Oh, I'm also experimenting with brutal honesty. Oh. <laughs> and I've always tried to be honest, but like um, if you want me to like um, if give give my position on your claim if you want to know where I stand on it, even though I'm trying to take my beliefs out of it, if you want to know where I stand on it, it's completely fine. Okay. But, um, yeah, um, is this your first time at this expo? Yes, yeah. What drew you to it? Uh, my friend does Reiki, and she just wanted somebody to come along, so she and her husband are here listening to something, and your, I just... Your friend? I wanted a chair massage. That's what I wanted. What's going on over there? Because there's a lady laying down... I don't know if you can see it or not. I have no idea. Okay. Like I went over there, like that. I was like, they're gonna have chair massages. I'm gonna go. Uh huh. I may play around to get a reading. I don't know. Mm. It's okay. I'm gonna well, take this no out of my hands yeah, because yeah. I have some fidget. Okay. Audio is really important to him, I guess. Right, we Should we be talking to the top of these things? Yeah, I tilt it down a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm just a quiet soul. Yeah, yeah. You are a little quiet. Yeah, and I, I don't have the best hearing either, so I might be like really be leaning in to, to hear what you're okay. saying. Um, ideally, when we're doing this, like we don't want to take a lot of your time. Okay. But we, we, what I would like to do is, is like isolate a belief that you have that you think is true, mm -hmm. and see if we can boil it down to a claim, okay. like a, a one sentence claim or so about what it is you think is true. Okay. And then I'll ask you some questions to. Okay. possibly help you reflect on your reasoning about it okay. if, if you're cool with that okay. yeah yep. okay uh, do you want to talk about do you want to talk about your view on Reiki healing or um, the tarot card thing or something else completely it um, could be politics even social and social issue it doesn't have to be anything that that you've experienced here um, maybe how my Christian faith kind of interacts with this stuff yeah because you know i'm not necessarily sold on a lot of it uh-huh i'm curious but i'm like you know i believe you know christ is my savior he died for my sins he's coming back and that's something like yes i grew up in church but it's something i've never questioned like it's not that my parents pushed it but i've just never, that is yeah. my truth and uh i believe god gives people gifts and yes, some people may have the gift of prophecy, but I don't know that all of this necessarily is of truth. Okay. So, like, it's, it's kind of, that's why I'm, like, skeptical of everything, and I was walking around, like, kind of doe-eyed, like, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, okay. I'm tempted to share my position on that, but um, I'll hold up. It's, it's available to you if you want to know okay. where I stand on it. Um, you have a certain, I want to repeat back what I think I'm hearing. Okay. You have a certain am amount of skepticism about what you're experiencing here with some of the booths that yes. you're seeing. And then you also mentioned your Christian faith. Yes. I'm wondering, 
are you or have you ever been as equally skeptical about the Christian beliefs as you are about these things? No. Okay. No, like I said, it's something that, to me, that is truth. There is, you can argue every which way, logically or not, and it's not going to change. I, I mean, from a, from a young, I wouldn't say young child, but from a child to now, like, People can give me all their reasons why they question the existence of God or Jesus, and it doesn't faze me because I know. Okay. <laughs> Are you saying, I think I hear you saying that you've had the the Christian beliefs for a very long time. Yes. You were raised with them. Yes. And there's nothing that would cause you to question it. Mm -mm. Okay. Let me ask you this. Okay. If you were raised with beliefs about Reiki or tarot card reading, do you think you'd be sitting here just as dogmatic? I don't well, know. I don't, maybe dogmatic is not the right I, word. But I, 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 that's I, how I see it. So that's that's my brutal honesty yeah, coming right. through. Like, nothing will change your mind about Christianity. But if you were raised to believe in Reiki healing and tarot card reading, do you think you'd be more apt to question it at this time in your life than the the other stuff? That's a hard question to answer because, yeah. I, like I said, like Christianity wasn't pushed on me. Like it was there, and like we went to church, but it wasn't. It was something I felt. And if I were raised with Reiki or tarot card reading, that that would be the norm. But would I ever? I, I don't know. I mean, possibly question it, but I don't. I mean, that would just seem normal to me at that point. If if you were raised, oh, this is what I think I okay. hear you saying. If you were raised with Reiki healing and tarot card reading, and it wasn't pushed on you, but it was all around you as you were growing up. Are you saying that you wouldn't be questioning it today? I don't know that I would be. Like it, yeah. it, it it's, that's a hard answer, hard question to answer because yeah. because I wasn't raised with it. So sure, I feel like I would question it, hmm. but I'm not. It seems just. Trying to come up with a, a good answer, but I don't. Maybe I would be questioning Christianity at that point if I were raised. But sometimes there's got to be a balance because I know friends that are Christians that you know may believe in certain things and and you know doing the Reiki healing and there's. I believe yes, we have energy in our body, but my faith is stronger than that like mm. you know I put more importance on my Christian faith than I put on anything that anybody's gonna say or do to me I got you is it fair to say that the Christian beliefs are more important to you than the Reiki beliefs and the tarot card reading beliefs to me is yes it? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. okay uh, maybe one more question yeah, sure. possibly I don't know how are you I don't, are, do you have a time limit on your okay do you have a time limit no Okay, you can end this at any time. I saw my friends walking by and they just kept walking. <laughs> okay. Here's what I'm wondering about. Um, what is it about the Reiki uh, beliefs and the tarot card reading that is causing you to be skeptical about it? And, and I, there's a reason why I'm asking this question. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering, once we get an answer, I want to see if, if we can compare that reason to why you're not questioning the the Christian okay. beliefs. So yeah, I don't know a lot about Reiki except what my friend Ange does, um, and like I've been on her table and I've you know experienced like colors in my mind and you know just sensations. And I mean, like I said before, like I understand that there's energy and we can impact each other. Um, I think I question more like the prophetic tarot card readings because I did a tarot card reading and like just a regular psychic reading because I wanted to see, I was testing to see if they would be similar and what I didn't like about the psychic reading was that she turned and was talking to my husband and he said I'm not exactly happy where I am I miss my family and to me my husband passed away July 28th of last year of 21 
and I cannot talk about him without smiling because I know that he is with our Savior. And like that's such a strong belief. Mm. And she was telling me that, um, do you mind if I have my guide, one of my guides, help him go to the next step? And I was like, I want to say, lady, I know exactly where he is. And mm. but I was like, sure. And she's like, okay, he's moving on to a better place. And I'm like, there is no better place. So it was like they're very skeptical of what she, someone who says she was raised a Southern Baptist. And I'm like, mm, I had a hard time with that. The tarot card, not so much, because there are cards in front of me, and I could kind of get my own ideas from the card, like inspiration from the cards, if nothing else. Like, okay. flip over the education one. I was like, huh, I'm currently in college to become a middle school teacher at 50. You know, like, oh, really? So just things like that that are, if they happen somewhere else in life, I'd call them God winks. Like, you know, little reassurances at a tarot card table. Maybe they're God Winks. I don't know. Did you say God Wings? God Winks. Like, oh, like, Winks. Like, yeah, you're on the God right track winks. kind of thing. Um, okay. Hmm. I felt more confirmation from the tarot card reading. And I specifically went, I, like, the lady that I went to for the, the psychic reading, like, there was just something, like, she said, her, her sign said something about truth. And I was like, okay, we'll go here. And I was just very uncomfortable with how she was phrasing things and the fact that she was turning to talk to Frank and he's not happy. And I'm like, yeah, he is. Mm. Like, I know he is. <laughs> like, um, okay. it was just very unsettling. So, okay. I don't know if that helps you at all. Uh, well, I mean, it helps me, I don't under, yeah, it helps me understand your, um, how you're viewing things mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, I, do, I honestly, this is more about helping the person that I'm interviewing, um, reflect on how they're, reasoning about things mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm tempted to ask you more questions go ahead can I ask you maybe one or two more sure. okay um, you mentioned uh, that you're it sounds like you're more you're somewhat more skeptical of those the things that you experienced over there to different different degrees like yeah. maybe the tarot card reading more so than the fortunes no, I am, I'm more skeptical less, of the... How would we this, rank them? How, could we rank them? Okay. Well, well, in terms of skepticism. On um, a scale of 1 to 10? Sure. Okay. Well, we, let's rank them in order. Like, okay. Like, what, which one are you... You're least skeptical about Christianity, and maybe we can work backwards from there. Okay. I'm not skeptical about yeah, Christianity. Yeah, you're so least, that's a zero. <laughs> zero. Yeah, there's okay. zero skeptical. Um, tarot cards... A six, the lady over here, probably a nine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, the tarot card was the lowest one. Yeah, right. Like it just, and maybe it was the presentation of things or like just the general feel. I was very comfortable at the table. Uh -huh. And I went in thinking, you know, I don't know that I believe any of this stuff. Um, but she was able to put me at ease and even just like seeing the cards, like I said, I was getting my own kind of inspiration from the cards. So, it was easier to digest. Was that the, um, are you saying that, it sounds like what you're saying is, uh, the more comfortable you are with what you're experiencing, the more likely you are to be less skeptical about it. Possibly. But when I sat down at first for the psychic reading, I was comfortable, uh -huh. and then she started talking, and her presentation was different, her, you know, the conversation with my husband, like, I don't know. It was, that was unsettling to me. Unsettling. Um, yes. Because I was very comfortable when I sat down. I specifically chose this person. I, like, I walked around like three times. Hmm. And I'm like, who do, who, I, who do I feel drawn to go to? Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's the table that I kept going, I'm going to go to her. And then, you know, I was comfortable when I sat down. And when she started doing her reading, I was like, mm. Uh-huh. Could something be unsettling or uncomfortable and be factually true? Of course. Okay. Can something be really comfortable and false? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Could you rank Christianity really high up there in terms of um, uh, your, well, we rank it in terms of skepticism, not right. level of comfort? But I am wondering if there's a parallel, if there's a parallel scale, maybe, in terms of comfortability. There are definitely some uncomfortable things in Christianity. Hmm. I mean, it's not all rainbows and sunshine and unicorn farts. Um, don't well, ask me why I said unicorn. Farts. As far as how you feel about it, 
Um, is there anything unsettling? Yeah. Is there a, okay? Is there a relationship between how something is unsettling to, and and how you how you view it skeptically? Like, if 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 it's more settling or comfortable, let me just put, use that word. Okay. Are you less likely to be skeptical about it? Kind of middle of the road because I can see it both ways. Because I can think of situations that were like very comfortable, but I'm still like. Okay. Okay. Um, random example. No. Say I'm seeing a man in the Dominican Republic. It's a very comfortable situation. Like I'm comfortable with being there. I enjoy the relationship. But there's still skepticism. Like, is he really who he says he is? Is he being honest? And so yes, you can be comfortable and skeptical at the same time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Does that answer? Uh, yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that probably does it for the questions I have. For I want to hear your side. Okay. Do you, do you want to ask me a specific question? No, it's just you, well, the very first question you said, I have thoughts on that. And it was about, I think it was when I said something about my Christianity and the fact that I just, like, that is my truth. Right. Um, I don't think, I don't, well, I don't know much about Reiki or um, tarot card reading, and I do know quite a bit about Christianity. My senses or my feeling, or put it this way, my confidence that those things are true and real um, is very low. Okay. Very low in the confidence, that it's, including the existence of a God or anything. Like, I... I'm very skeptical on it. Mm -hmm. um, I do recognize that that, that it, could, it could it could maybe make me feel comfortable to think that maybe you know there's an afterlife or there's a deity watching out for me or, or my spouse is you know, will will be there when it, you know when I die or something. Like, that's a, that's a comfortable feeling to me. But my confidence that that's factually true is very low. Yeah, that's where I stand. Have you ever heard of the book Case for Christ? I have. It's a good book. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's like, I'm skeptical. Have you read it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, this is where you can ask me questions too. So I, I'm, I'm tempted. To, I'm tempted to ask you more questions. You can ask more questions. I am not a question asker. That's the joke oh, really? with my friends, oh, yeah. because I'm I have. More, I'm more of a questioner than an answerer, to be honest. I'm the person like. We just did this last night. One of my close friends and my boss, who was one of my friends. Um, this is the second time we've been out just to hang out and my friend Michelle will ask a thousand questions and I am more of a person like I've known my boss a couple of years I'm more of I'll just listen when he talks and I'll take in information whereas Michelle will just be like so I hear you're separated from your wife mm. what happened there like mm. and I'm like oh that's just <laughs> like she will just ask questions and I can't I can't do that I'm a listener like okay. just take it in like uh -huh. Uh -huh. so mm. If you want to ask more questions, I'm an open, I, I say I'm an open book. I've always um, said that. I think maybe just in the interest of keeping it short, we should probably wrap it up here. Okay. You know, I, I've done this. I've done these interviews before for my own my, my own channel, but what I usually do is I, I invite people to come back. So okay. I, I don't know if, if let's say you come back if you want to come back in an hour, or if you're here tomorrow, okay. and if you want to continue the conversation, okay. or maybe ask me more questions, or okay. if, if you want me to qu ask you more questions. Okay. Maybe I should have Michelle write down questions I should ask you. <laughs> Feel free to. That would be awesome. If you showed up tomorrow with a list of questions you wanted to ask me. Or maybe I'll bring Michelle and let her ask you the questions. Bring your friend over. Yeah. She would be freaked out by all of this. Why? Um, how unchristian it is in her eyes. Uh, like when I told her that I was going with oh, this, this event, yes. not this interview. Oh, no, not the interview. Okay. No, she okay. would speak her mind. She would definitely speak her mind. When I told her I was going with Ange to this Reiki event, she's like, you know, like very skeptical. Yeah. So I'm I'm more entertained by the idea <laughs> than anything. What? I have one last question. Okay. Um, what would it take for you to be as skeptical as you are about this? And I know you're moderately skeptical yeah. about it. Not as much as your friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would it take for you to become more skeptical more skeptical about your Christian outlook? I don't know that I can't be because it's so much it's so much in my core that I can't explain it. Like I wish I could say I had this event when I was, you know, twelve years old where I it was like, Oh, right. I realized I needed a savior. It's just always been part of me. Hmm. Like I can't 
you know, yes, there were times growing up, like especially, you know, the 20s and early 30s where I didn't necessarily live a Christian, a typical Christian life. But during that whole time, the faith didn't change. It was just my behavior. Mm. Um, I've, I've never... I, I, you always believed as strongly as you did mm -hmm. like, since, since forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, you know, people have all these people have different testimonies and all of these events and things and where they, you know, the way they thought and the way that it's like even in my 20s and 30s when I was making bad decisions, I knew that I was making bad decisions and I knew, I knew my reality that Christ was my savior. Like, I still made bad decisions. I mean, Christians aren't perfect <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, right. But it just, that part of me is in my core and I, I don't know if I could get rid of it if I wanted to. Like, just, and that's not a logical explanation. But it's the reality, it's your it's, reality. It's my reality. Like, yeah. this is who I am. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, wonderful. All right, Beth, well, thank you very much. You're I'm really appreciative of your time. No problem. Oh. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I thought we got a little mired in the weeds, maybe a little bit, but I mean, well, I thought, even you know, even so, like, I noticed like right away her body language when I when I like she would cross her arms like really quickly, like when we talked about um, in the beginning. Yeah. And I thought I, I remember thinking I need to spend a little bit more time on rapport. So even though it lagged a little bit in the middle, possibly, I was th I, I was also thinking this is good. This is not a bad thing. I think it's going to probably end up making her feel comfortable. If she's just if she's talking. Oh, I thought it was a, just so my perspective. I really truly thought it was a great talk. Partly because my yardsticks for great talks is at the end. She asked you, mm. "What do you and, think? What do you believe?" That's a good yardstick. When I heard yes. you say that, as your one of your metrics for determining the success of an SE talk. That is a phenomenal metric. As soon as she said that, this is a great conversation. She's thinking about this. She yeah. also mentioned her friend possibly wanting to come by, and yeah, I, that's 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 my metric is if they want to come back and have more talks. But that's, I mean, I like your I like your line of questioning. I just I like just really interesting how we all do things differently. But I like your line of questioning how you, um, you know. She believes in Christianity because, and she basically discussed because she grew up with it. And you kind of basically laid out like, what if you were, you grew up with Reiki or. That's kind one? of, that's an outsider test, yeah, but an, almost like with her own self. Right. Um, which I know, it's, it's tempting. I, we were talking about like not doing OTF just as, as a challenge. But uh, yeah, I, no, I, thought, I thought it was a fair question. It was probably the time that she reflected the most. Um, there was a moment where she she paused for a good ten oh, yeah. seconds or so. That's great. That was so really good. I, I'm happy. That's another one of my metrics. Yes, yeah, important. Are they yeah, reflecting? Sure. You know, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's one of our goals. I, I think. Um, yeah, absolutely. That, that's a good metric I use too. She. Um, one thing. I was just wondering how you were handling. It's just so cool to see you do it live. You know, it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is different for me. Going, and I'm sitting down screen. too. I'm usually standing. Oh yeah. So like body body language when you sit down is a little different too. Yeah. But do you have any specific? Um, well, no. I thought it was really interesting that. Um, hi. Would anyone we? like to be uh, record a, a we're, belief? We're recording interviews. Or, Conversations for yeah. a podcast. Up to you. Um. um You know, I just, you know, one thing I was just really curious how you were going to handle it was when, um, and we've all been there, where she tells you a reason for the belief. Which belief? Uh, well, the Christian. Well, okay. she lost her husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, things become more clear. Like, oh, you believe this a hundred percent. I see a possible reason why mm -hmm. you believe this 100%. And then it's kind of like, well, where do I go? Do I still, you know, where do I, do I talk about? Um, am I taking away a support system for her? Or that did I... go through my mind. That went through my mind. Like, it was clear that the belief is important to her. 
But honestly, like, I was actually surprised that you even brought that up as a reason because I forgot about it. <laughs> wow. Because I, I wasn't really, it didn't seem like that was a big enough, the, the biggest reason is because she she was raised she with it. She grew up in it. She grew up in it and she recognizes it. Yeah. That's her biggest reason. It's a, it's a core part of her identity. Yeah, you don't, yeah, I was wondering if, because she was holding on to it so tightly, and I, I was wondering how much that recent part of her life had to do with that. And I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, it may have it may have strengthened her resolve in her Christian beliefs because of her husband dying, and well, she told that other person, no, I know where he's going to be." Yeah, you, she you was like tell really me adamant. I've, yeah, I already. Yeah, so she's very dogmatic on it. Yeah, <coughs> I did think it was interesting. Sorry. I did think it was interesting that she brought up a book for me. I don't. So, know, I haven't heard well, this book. She, I, mean, yeah. I don't know if you had your headphones on, but she, I, I invited her to ask me questions, and she wanted to know where I stood on this stuff. And I said I don't believe any of this stuff is true, including the Christianity. And then that's when she, um, almost within a minute, I think that's when she said, "I, I have a book recommendation for you." To so turn apostatize. And it's the, the case for Christ. Yeah. Um, I didn't really hear. I was talking to somebody. I didn't really hear how it yeah. ended, but. Um, so. I, when, when that happens, when she prostitute, when someone prostitutes, when, when someone's messaging or they're offering you resources for why you should believe their belief, I, it's a setback in an SE talk. I, I yeah, think. it is. Yes, like it's good for rapport. Yeah, and you can mangle it. Like if I'm like, screw that book. Like that's what all the Christians tell me. You know, when I really, yeah, you can. You, if if you handle it poorly, it will damage rapport. But if you handle it graciously. It helps report, and that's about the best you can do with it. Is acknowledge it, but if they if they're insistent on it, then you, then I think you can meet it with more insistence in return. Yeah, that's what I would do with with that situation. Um, yeah, sometimes I allow a little bit in the beginning because of the rapport thing. Like, oh, I'm right. sitting here listening to you tell me your so, thing. And so if she brought it up again, I might say something like, well. If you had read that book, would you become more strong in your views, or you know, is it is it influencing you at all? Like, why are you recommending this book to me? I'm interested in your views, and I would sort of like, I would acknowledge the resource that she's offering, and then we'd set it aside because it doesn't ha it doesn't impact her. We're exploring her. It doesn't reasoning. reflect her primary reason that she gave you. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But it was good. I I liked the broader conversation about about um, being settled. Or she mentioned like a lot of what I'm what a lot of what I'm seeing here unsettled me, I, I'm, but Christianity is less is more settled is less unsettling for me. Christianity is less unsettling for me. So that's this whole concept of um, comfort. Like I don't know if you heard me ask her, you know, can a belief be true and not yeah, be unsettling? And yeah, unsettling, can, yeah, uncomfortable. Uh -huh. And she agreed that it could. Yeah. That might be the one like. If you were to ask me what's the one thing that I hope she walks away with would be that point. Really? Can I be holding a belief that is settling to me that is not true? That's what I would hope that she's walking away from. And if she comes back, I might bring that up again. That would be something that I want to Yeah. And I see if she wants I get to talk where, about. I mean, look, if you've just lost your spouse and you're all probably all about being things that are settling for you. I mean, comforting. And uh, it's um I mean, I, I get it. Yeah. And uh, you can definitely feel for somebody like that. Yeah, for sure. Hello. Hi. 